Welcome to Envisioned Broadcasting. The station designed to encourage, equip, and empower you for growth and success presents When They Hear Us, an author's movement, a show that provides authors a platform to share their voice with the world. When They Hear Us, with Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley, begins now. Hello, 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 world. Welcome to When They Hear Us. I am your host, Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley, and we have a special episode today. And I have a co host, Miss Heaven Ross. You'll hear from her shortly. We are excited to bring you something new. Um, a lot of you may not know this. Well, the people who know me <laughs> may not know this, but I have been writing poetry since I was a kid. And I love to write. And writing the books that I wrote this year really made me want to have a platform for people who write, for authors, whether it be self-published or people who write poetry or even people who write rhymes. (laughs) So I decided to have once a month, I guess I won't say like a poetry slam. Um, I wanted to have something done with poetry, spoken word, because, you know, with COVID, they don't have a platform to go out there, you know, and, and speak and, and talk and spit, <laughs> whatever they want to say. So I was like, you know what? Why not use my show? So that is why we are here today. We're pretty much introducing it. And the reason that we are here is because we're family. <laughs> we have a family of poets, a family of writers a family of uh, music, people in the music industry, rappers, singers, you name it, we have it in the family, in, in our immediate family. You know, like I stated, I write books, poetry, and my oldest son, he writes rhymes, um, he raps, and he also writes other music. And my one of my daughters she actually writes rhymes. <laughs> she writes music and poetry as well. My youngest one, not so much. <laughs> and my dad, he writes poetry. He writes books. And my sister writes poetry. And she is the mother to my niece, Heaven, who also writes poetry, which I did not know. And when I found out, I was excited. (laughs) So she's a little bit shy. So, you know, she's probably in the background now, just like giggling and whatnot (laughs) for me saying this. But I'm going to let her introduce herself. But before I get started with that, I want to state that I am the CEO of the Leaders Innovative Growth Solutions. Also, the founder and the CEO of Boss Up Lead Hers Incorporated is a 501c3 nonprofit for women and, chim- for women and youth, um, basically young girls. And I am the host of three international radio shows. Um, and I'm just loving life right now. <laughs> so I am going to let Heaven introduce herself. Heaven? Hello, everybody. I'm Heaven. I am the president of the Girl Power Up Youth Group, where we do a lot of activities. We teach young girls how to mature into women, and we just teach a little bit of everything. (laughs) And we also have our own show called Dear Queens of Tomorrow, where we talk about anything, anything we went through, all the stories we have, or school-related things. So if you guys want to hear anything that we talk about. Um, Yeah, it's called Dear Queens Tomorrow. (laughs) So if you want to tune in, you guys can tune in. But I'm Heaven again. (laughs) So yeah. All right, Heaven. See, I told you she's a little bit shy, you guys. So (laughs) you would think she wouldn't be being the actual co-host of an international talk show, right? And a podcaster. And she is one of the, the big time TikTok people. She's going to show me how to do that because I'm not one to TikTok (laughs) and also Instagram. 
She's another, uh, she is a, a huge influencer and you will be surprised that she's only 15 years old. Well, she's about to be the sweetie 16 next month, I believe. So yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do for you now is we're going to speak a little bit of our poetry and also how it makes us feel. And it has been a while since I actually sat down and wrote. I write a lot of poetry that is very personal to me. And I also write poetry is I can be sitting down and watching a movie. And one just pops up in my head, I just start writing. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to... um you know, actually speak one of the poems, well, a couple of the poems that I actually wrote as I was watching a movie. And also, I'm going to talk a little bit about the poem. A friend of mine, you know, he would write a poem and I would, you know, respond to it. And that was pretty cool, too. That was a little different thing that I've, ever, I've never done before. But hey, it was very much fun. So, um, man. When I sit and I write, and I, I used to journal a lot. Well, back in the day, I'm not going to tell you how long that's been. Back in the day, I used to have a diary. And in this diary, I would write it in every single day. You know, a lot of you probably know about this little book, and it has a key lock. <laughs> and you would always try and hide your little key so your little sister can't get to it and open it up and start being nosy. <laughs> Yes, I am referring to my sister. She knows she was nosy. Anyway, so it just, it's a, a feeling of release. I'm able to get feelings out that are bottled up inside and not have to go or, you know, go off on anyone, not have to just hold it all in. So when I write poetry, it just, I put, it puts me in a different place. And I am one, I love jazz music. I can sit back and have a glass of wine and just chill and ignore the world. Yes, I even ignore my cell phone. <laughs> because I want to stay in that place just for a moment. So it's, ugh, I, I just... It just gives me a different kind of energy. How about you, Heaven? How does it make you feel to just write? And what do you write about? So when I write, I kind of, when I tend to write, it's out of irritation or if I'm feeling down. So then I'll just pick up my phone and just start typing in my notes and just write poetry. It doesn't make, well, I wouldn't say it doesn't make me feel any type of way because it does it's a release to me so anytime I just find myself <laughs> like getting angry or irritated I just pick up my phone and just write in my notes so I would say poetry is just a way to release some of my emotions and just give me a platform to write down anything that's on my mind but I really gravitate towards system writing because that's what I find myself attached to it gives me well it's a comfortable it's a more comfortable subject that I gravitated towards and it just makes me feel some type of way because I love black history and I just I love writing about system system writing so yeah wow that is amazing man and you are going to hear from a 15 year old who has been writing since she was probably what, like two, three years old. <laughs> yeah, I think I was sitting when I wrote my first one. <laughs> wow, that is that is simply amazing. And a lot of my poetry is based on love as well. So I, I didn't used to want anyone to hear the things that I would write, but um, yeah. Seeing that a poetry book is in the works <laughs> for me, I am trying to get my dad to join. I believe Heaven is going to join, and I'm trying to get her mother to join, and our my children as well. My dad writes a lot about things that make you sad. I don't know why he does that. <laughs> that would probably put me in a place where I just, I don't know. 
it just put me in a different spot where I don't want to be. But I do love reading his poetry because it, you know, it's an eye opener to me. He writes on things that has happened, things he has seen. And it's like, wow, imagine growing up with this thing. It's just depressing to me. But it's also a sight that like, wow, my dad's even stronger than I thought. (laughs) So we are going to take a quick break and we come back. You are going to hear some of our poetry. No, before that, I want to say this real quick. I want to go over. I want to actually state one of um, my poems I wrote. I believe it was a long time ago. (laughs) It is, I am, therefore, I will. I am a beautiful black woman. Therefore, I will always hold my head up high and never walk around and sigh. I am a successful, educated woman. Therefore, I will always conquer the world and stride and never leave without God by my side. I am a wonderful mother. Therefore, I have triumphant offspring who will never allow the devil to stop them from dreaming. I am an amazing daughter. Therefore, I will never turn astray when obstacles seem to come my way. I am self, Tracy Hines Lashley, soon to be Dr. Tracy. Therefore, I will always have my heart's desires and ensure that I have the power to seek higher. Woo! I love it. That was before I became Dr. Lashley. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley is a child of God, wife, mother, and grandmother. She was born and raised in Panama City, Florida, before moving to Fayetteville, North Carolina, at the age of 23. She is the lead HERZ architect trademark and supports leaders' elevation to the pinnacle, respect, leadership level, while strategizing team effectiveness and productivity. She specializes in helping women in leadership harmonize family and work life, while developing dynamic and productive teams. She is a dynamic, high-powered professional with a results-charged career in growth and leadership. Her purpose in life is to transform the lives of others by inspiring, equipping, and growing. Her mission in life is to provide leaders with the tools required to ignite an intentional growth mindset that will drive behavior to achieve actionable results of personal value. Her vision is to see women reach their full potential, remove obstacles and knowledge gaps, and lead their life versus just living their life. Find out more about Dr. Lashley at drtracylashley.info. We are back. Oh, Okay, I had to get my my voice back a little bit. (laughs) Sometimes when I read my poetry, it's like, wow, did I say that? Did I do that? Did I even write that? Okay, heaven, do you want to recite one of your poems or do you want me to say another one? I think you're ready to say one of yours. (laughs) I think I'm ready. I wrote one about black women too. So I'll start with that one too. <laughs> okay, good. Let's hear it. Okay. So, whew, y'all, if I stutter, whew, I'm shy. So, okay. So, this poem is called The Beauty of a Black Woman. So, from the roots that we bleed to the touch of God's hand, our beauty is our biggest enemy, but yet the greatest gift on the land. To the texture of our hair, to the grip of our hands, to every curve and imperfection on our body, to the mind and soul of a black man. So that black man part, it was kind of like a spinoff because I didn't really, because when I write poetry, it just goes on. So it was just kind of a spinoff for me. So next time I'm going to finish that poem and it's going to be about black men. So, yeah. Wow. That is, that is very interesting that you say that. So your poetry is basically like storytelling in a series. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. So it could just go on for days. Wow. 
Wow. I I am just like, okay, I I like that. I never thought to to actually do something that way. Have you seen any um, poets who, you know, have that style of writing? Um, I've never seen a poet that has a style of writing, but I find a few poets that, um, I don't, they can just add on to it, but they won't just go on with the poem. So they'll stop, but then add on to it, but it'll end at a certain time. So, Okay. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I know. Well, oh, man, Maya Angela was one of my favorites. <laughs> oh, man. I remember when she was in Panama City, Florida, and I'm like, if she was so tall. <laughs> I could have sworn she was like seven feet tall, <laughs> but she wasn't that tall. But I'm like, who, who, who is your favorite poet? I have so many, but that was one of my favorites. Uh, I don't have a favorite poet. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just listen to poetry and spoken word. And I just, I'm just like, oh, I like that. So I don't really have a favorite poet. So uh-huh. talking about spoken word, when you're, when you first heard it, what were your thoughts and, and were you intrigued? I actually really love um, spoken words. So when I first heard it, it actually spoke to me in a way that other poetry didn't speak to it. Okay. So <laughs> spoken word is like storytelling, but with a twist of poetry to it. So I kind of gravitate towards spoken word more and I really want to get into that. So when I first heard it, it just spoke to me in a different way. So I just feel like I love spoken word more than poetry, but they're, you know. (laughs) Well, spoken word really is um, a form of poetry and it is more so of telling a story. It's like you're talking to someone, but you're telling it in a way that you could tell it's poetry and it has a lot of emotion in it. And that is one thing that I love. It's like, it's like they're like some of it's like gut punching. It's like, oh, they just hit me. Or man, I feel that and I just start tearing up and I don't know, it's just something about it. I can sit there and listen to it all day long. <laughs> and I am um actually in Clubhouse, and there are some rooms that I'm like, oh my goodness. I remember last night I was just sitting there for two hours listening to um poetry, so a spoken word um, artist. And also they had a musician there. So he was on his line, on his end, just playing that piano. It's just like, oh, it just put me in another place. <laughs> so when you hear it, what, what, I mean, where does it take you? Uh, it's, I don't, poetry Wait, can you respond? Uh, yeah, when you when you're when you're hearing the, the spoken word, I know we both you know really love spoken word, but when you hear it as a fifteen year old, that's why I keep going back. You're like fifteen, <laughs> you know. You listen to grown folks stuff. <laughs> does it does it excite you and make you want to write more, or does it just put you in a place where you just ignore the world for the moment? <laughs> yeah, I kind of tend to ignore the world the world for quite a moment because <laughs> sometimes I'm just well most of the time I'm in my room so I'll tend to listen to spoken word more than well poetry and spoken word is really the same thing yeah same yeah <laughs> so I just find myself listening to poetry or spoken word and just writing myself so when I hear spoken word it just takes me to a different place like it's like I'm in a different world and I could just hear what everybody else has to say and it can just make me feel some type of way. I remember, I think it was this girl's poem and it was like friends with benefits, but it was with her anxiety. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really good poem. I think her name is Jay Nichelle, I think, but it was a really good poem. And I feel like that's, well, I would say she could be my favorite poem. Poet, what is it? Okay. Yeah, poet, so. Wow. Yeah, and um, I listened to some of the artists today, and 
it just puts me in a place like I'm, I'm listening to poetry and just spoke a word. Her is, I love her. I am telling you, I don't know if you've ever heard her or not, but her just puts me in a zone. <laughs> the singer? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love her too. Oh my goodness. It is just wow. Okay. All right. Um, this next poem, I remember sitting down and I was watching one of um, Tyler Perry's movies. Man, I forgot which one this one was. It was the one where he was pulling her out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot which one it was, but, you know, she left her husband and um, well, no, well, she, well, she was forced out of her house. She didn't just up and leave him. You know, and she found a man who treated her right. So I was in and, and, and she did not want to have a moment where they were too close. I'll put it that way. So they had a lot of, you know, conversations, a lot of dating and, you know, a lot of cuddling and things of that nature. You know, we were on the air, so I won't say too much. So <laughs> and it was just. I, initially, it, I would say it was a special friend. So I wrote this poem and I named it a special friend. Um, and it goes like this. A soft spoken voice on the other end of the line made me feel that this moment came right on time. What moment do you know the time is right to give up and stop putting up a fight? There comes a time and a place for everything. But should it be so soon after taking off a ring? What is the silence during the night that is making this moment feel so right? Could it really be the dreams that were foreseen? Or could it mean that this moment shows things unseen? A man that is a good thing, a thing of the past, would make you want to move so fast, not move so fast. What kind of man would be this thoughtful after having one who is just so awful? A man who is the one you seek could possibly make things seem not so bleak. The gentle, warm, tender touch is making you want this man so much. But with God's presence in the night, makes you realize the moment just is not right. With the rapid pumping of two heartbeats, begin to mend the torn vessels that are, that are weak. Who is this man who sits close to me? A special friend who shares moments of intimacy. Ah! <laughs> How you like that one, Heaven? <laughs> I like that one. Like that one. <laughs> Did it place you in the movie? <laughs> I don't remember what movie it was, but I remember. Um, oh, a diary of a mad black woman. Oh, yes. Remember, she met that fine brother, <laughs> <laughs> and she just did not want to get too close. At first, she was like, "I remember when they were in the, in the club and they were dancing," and she was like, "Okay, please let this man say something crazy or whatever." And he said that it was a dream, and she was like, "Really?" <laughs> Yes, I I love that movie. And then, you know, her going back and forth with her husband and she did not, you know, want to do him wrong, even though he did her wrong. So watching that movie, it just took me to a place and I was like, oh, so I just started writing. <laughs> so I, I get into my feelings a lot and I love love and, and being happy. And so a lot of my poetry is about that. So heaven. Which one do you want to share now? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll share the one called America. It's not long, but it's pretty long. So that's fine. <laughs> America, everything isn't really what it seems. They want to talk about history, but won't tell us what it really means. America isn't the home of the brave and land of the free, because if it really was, why are they killing every black man or woman they see? Thinking our skin is a weapon, but if it really was, what about the history our skin bleeds? 
It's the land where my people get mistreated and that's not the way it should be. Open your eyes and realize this isn't a dream. See Martin Luther King Jr. experienced the same thing. See, America has never been the home of the brave and land of the free. Instead, it was the home of the white man who enslaved our people and couldn't let them be. The leader of this country is racist, but y'all just give him praise. I feel defeated the way our people have been mistreated and made out to be. <sighs> y'all, I wrote that one when I was 14, I think. I was just sitting in the car, and then I just started writing. I don't know where it came wow. from. <laughs> I just started writing. And I felt all of that. Every word is like, man, listen, you guys, this coming from a 14-year-old and wanting people to wake up. She's sharing her feelings. So, Heaven, you have a brother. I have sons. When when you wrote that, did you think about what could happen to them? At the time, um, I felt like When I was writing this, I thought about every Black person, every Black woman, every Black man. So I did think about my brothers and my sister, because if they were to get pulled over and, you know, something goes wrong, then everything will go just out of proportion. And now that it's this time, and 2020 had a lot of, just a lot of things Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So I feel and, like- and hearing hearing from a, a 15 year old is is incredible. Okay, I'm sorry. What were you about to say? <laughs> um, like Brianna Taylor and George George Floyd. I feel like at this time it was I think it was meant for me to pull out this poem because this time is really just is <laughs> I yeah. can't explain this. Yeah, man. Okay, you guys, we're going to we're going to catch our breath off of that one. We're going to take another quick break and we will be right back. Dr. Lashley is also known for her support in Fayetteville, North Carolina, Hope Mills, North Carolina, and surrounding areas volunteering in the community. Dr. Lashley was influential in the development of the Cyber Academy for Fayetteville State University. She is a doctor in the highest level of business management and holds a Master of Business Administration in Technology Management, a Master of Business Administration in Human Resource Management, and is currently working on a Master of Science in Performance Improvement. She is a Certified Behavior Consultant and Trainer, and a Certified John Maxwell Team Trainer, Coach, and Speaker where she also holds a Certification for Youth Leadership and Parent and Family. If you would like to learn more about Dr. Lashley, She can be reached at 910-759-3375 or Tracy. Dr. Lashley is an expert team culture strategist who educates leaders on techniques to harmonize family and work life while developing dynamic and productive teams. After being raised underprivileged becoming a single mother of two, Dr. Lashley married an army soldier who deployed to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Korea 11 times during his 20 years of service. She was forced to raise three of five children essentially alone. As a working mother and college student for 10 years, she had to find a sense of balance while juggling her children's activities and not losing herself in the process. She now helps working mothers and women in leadership positions harmonize their life while creating dynamic and productive teams at home and work. Are you ready for Dr. Lashley to elevate your teams at work and home? If so, contact her today by sending an email to info at drtracielashley.com or by going to her website at drtracylashley.info. We are back, you guys, and I am excited because you get to see another side of me, the side I don't talk about. (laughs) I love writing. We're talking about poetry. Um, You're listening to Myself and my niece, um, Heaven Ross, we are both poets, um, writers. Hopefully she'll write a book one day. And I am just enjoying this little, this little tile on my knees. So Heaven, I, I like the, the poems that you wrote so far that you told us about. I know you have a lot more. So you write a lot about things that are going on in our world. Are there any moments where you feel that 
You're going to write something specifically for teenagers. Have you written anything for the teenage community? Um, you know, for young girls who are, you know, growing to be queens, <laughs> anything of that nature. Right. Um, I kind of, I start poems, but don't finish them. So it's kind of, <laughs> I have to be, I won't say I have to be, but I mostly write poems when I'm upset or just frustrated. So I feel like in the future or probably later on this year or next year, because it's about to be January. <laughs> <laughs> I will start writing again about um, okay. teenagers and everything else. Cool. <laughs> All right. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier in this show, I love to, I won't call it like battle poetry or whatever, but you know, a friend of mine, um, you know, he would write poems and and sometimes I would, you know, come back because I would see a poem that he posted online. I was like, ooh, so I grab it and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do a spinoff of that one. <laughs> and sometimes he'd be like, I can't believe you did that. I'm like, yes, I did. So for those of you who do not know, um, we are, well, I say black. <laughs> I don't know if heaven says African-American or whatnot, but we have full lips. Well, he wrote this poem called Lips, and it goes like this. I love it when they're full and round. I love it even more when they're mac down. It's sexy to see them pout, but the frowns I could definitely do without. When they whisper, it's automatic chills. Kisses on my neck and chest, it's sheer ecstasy thrills, exotic thrills. Next to mine, they could forever stay. My body is their playground. So have fun and feel free to play. Colored or glossy, I love when they're sexy and bossy. I was like, oh, really? Okay. So I came back with that. Another poem off of the spinoff of that one. I said, full and round are what they are, but missing you close to me thus far. They mac you, they mac you down per your request. Be careful what you ask for because it could lay you to rest. <laughs> Stuck out for with a slight pout could literally have you strung out, whispering your name in the heat of passion, bring you chills, but with great reaction. Kissing your neck and chest gives you thrills and definitely leaving, leaving you in a frill. Playing in the playground, being so free, will make you want to focus only on me. <laughs> How you like that one, Heaven? <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> I love playing around and, and battling, and I love um, debates. <laughs> so seeing that someone was writing, and I'm like, oh, I would just grab your poem and just do a spinoff or come back at that poem. So if you ever see me do that to one of yours, <laughs> don't get upset. It's something I love to do. <laughs> yeah. So you want to say another one of yours? Uh, <laughs> I think I have one more. So okay. This one isn't about Black history. It's not about anything. So it's called What is Pain? So I wrote this when I was in my room and I was just thinking about my dad. So, you know. <laughs> so what is pain? It's pain when it feels like someone stabs you in your heart, when you can't see the light from the dark. It's pain, the sorrows you feel when it's cold. Is it the feeling you have when you have no one to hold? So I asked myself, what is pain? It's kind of short. So. <laughs> and you sped it up and I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, wow. I'm, I'm sorry, you guys. I, I'm just like, because this is coming from a, a place where your father leaves you at a young age and it seems as though he just disappeared, fell off the face of the earth. And this is, it, even though it was short, it was deep especially knowing the situation. So, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. So for anyone listening, any man out there listening, even women, because women leave their children too. If you ever left your child and just had no thought of them at all again, or just left them to the wayside, just know they could be a heaven who's sitting over there and writing or crying or something or doing something even worse. Pick up a phone and call them, write them a letter, letter, go on Facebook, so just, just reach out and at least say hi. I, 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 this show isn't about all of that. And, and hearing that, that poem, it just, <laughs> yeah, it just put me in a place. Yeah. That one was, <laughs> yeah. So what would you, I know this is about poetry and, and one thing about poetry is real. And when you're thinking about your father and you wrote that, what, where did it, did it give you some type of release or is it just anger? Uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily anger, but it did give me a type of relief because recently, I want to say last year, I actually forgave him, but it still, you know, it still hurts. So I wrote that poem just to release some feelings that I never really got off my chest. So, yeah. That was- wow. Man. You know, you gotta forgive but not forget. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. So what are some pointers you would give people who ever said that I'm not creative enough to write? How did you how did you get started? <laughs> so I think <laughs> when I was seven, I started writing poetry. I wrote one about McDonald's and Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I was hungry. <laughs> oh, <goodness. laughs> At that time, I knew that I could write, but <laughs> it was really just a funny poem. So I wouldn't say it was create. Well, everything you do is creative. Like yeah, it doesn't matter if you're- yeah. So I feel like everybody can tap into their creative side and write poetry because anybody can do it. Anybody's able to do it. If you went through something in your life. If you went through like pain or sorrow, you can write poetry. So, yeah, I would just say anybody can write poetry, but you have to, I would say it doesn't have to rhyme, but because some poems don't rhyme, but they have a significant meaning behind them. So, yes, I'm glad you brought that up because some of the times, some of the times poems that I write, they don't rhyme. It it might, um, I would say each paragraph might rhyme with each other at the end. But going line by line, they may not rhyme. And it's okay. And one thing about, oh man, spoken word, here we go again. Um, I love it. <laughs> it's just pure emotion. You know, you're you're telling your story. You're just you're being real. And when you're up on stage, it's like, wow, I've never been up there yet. I said I was going to go <laughs> and get on stage and um because I love to, even when I read my poems, I was reading them on the air. It's just my emotions. You can just feel it. And it's something I always love. I never took acting classes. Now, my youngest one, now one thing he can do is act. <laughs> He's not the writer, but I believe he did write a couple of poems, but he wouldn't let me read them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like Deja, Heaven's sister, she says she can't write, but I'm like, mm-hmm. I- I'm sure she has something in her little Rolodex. <laughs> she probably do. <laughs> she don't want anybody to know about it. <laughs> okay, everyone. Um, it is close to Christmas, and we just wanted to bring something special to you guys. Wanted to bring a little piece of what you will hear next year, uh, once a month. You will be hearing poetry. You will be hearing poets from around the world. And they will be battling. And we're just going to bring some fun to the show. Heaven, you are a big TikToker, (laughs) a big Instagrammer. How can they find you? And are you going to be putting some of your poems out there? Are you going to recite some of them, you know, so they can see you? Uh, 
hopefully next year. So I say this because I was kind of hesitant about coming on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw it was fun, right? <laughs> right yeah. So I feel like now that I actually aired it, I can I have the confidence to actually do like shows or write books about it. So yes. yeah, I'll come out with something soon. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, I enjoyed this. Um, like I said, a lot of my poet, well, majority of my poems are personal. I will start writing more that are not and so that I can share them and you will hear them on the air as well. And we might have heaven back. She might even be a co-host. You never know. <laughs> and she can share some of her poetry as a 16 year old. Go heaven. Almost sweet 16. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I enjoyed you. And I'm glad that you were listening to when you, when they hear us. And I will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Thank you for listening to When They Hear Us, where Dr. Tracy Hines Lashley and her guests provide stories and experiences. This is also a platform for authors to encourage, empower, and equip people around the world with their voice. To learn more about Dr. Lashley and her quest to share the voice of powerful writers, go to her website at drtracylashley.info. You may also contact her by sending an email to info at drtracylashley.com. Remember to always intentionally walk in your purpose and strive to elevate to significance.